Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And today we're gonna to be chasing after some springtime crappie. I'm gonna show you how I'm finding them on the side imaging sonar. You're gonna see some live scope footage, and I'm gonna give you three tactics to help catch them and put them in the boat. All right, so to find these crappie, you're going to be looking for spawning flats. Now, these are large areas that are somewhere between three to five feet of water on our natural lakes up north. And you're looking for a mixture of vegetation and hard bottom. Okay, now the main school of crappie, the main wave of crappie are still in kind of that late pre-spawn phase. So they're set up right now in that five to eight feet of water. On side imaging, you're gonna see vegetation uh, that's popping up on left and right of my boat. But what you'll notice is there's really bright marks on your side imaging. These are those crappie that are waiting for that water temp to get to that right mark before they push in shallow and get on their beds. There's three tactics you can use. The first one is simply casting out a plastic and reeling it slowly back to the boat. This is done, you tie a loop knot. It's a very simple knot. All right, so the very simple setup is the loop knot. Super easy to tie. You just put your, uh, put your line through the eye, eyelid of the hook, pinch it together with your left hand and your right hand. And then you're gonna flip it between the middle. It's gonna create a little loop with your right hand. You're gonna put your jig head all the way through that loop. Slide it all the way over the top of the jig head. And you're gonna keep that tag end and the main line pinched. Pull it tight, wet it a little bit. And there we go, we got a loop knot. I'm gonna clip off that excess tag end. That. And then today we're gonna to be using a black and chartreuse. Fairly typical color pattern that works pretty much throughout the entire US for crappie. Slide that up over this little barb here. We're just gonna be casting out over these suspended fish. All right, so now we got this thing tied on. Cast this thing out over the top of them. There they all are, suspended. Reel it back, see if black and chartreuse is a magic color. They're all over this little weed edge. There's one. It's a decent one too. Yep. This little 10 incher. See it's got a black belly. That's a male. That's how you tell the difference. There he is. There's one. It's a better one too. This guy's a, this one's a female. She's gonna go back. Got the white belly. See how she got the all white belly? That's a female. Actually, she spawned out. She's pretty skinny right there. Normally they'd be all beefed up. Another little 10 inch fish. Most of them are gonna be 10 inch fish in this lake. Now if you didn't have live scope, all you'd have to do is when you see them on that, light, that side imaging, basically light up like a bunch of Christmas trees in these weeds, throw out a buoy, anchor up and just start spray casting. Start casting a bunch of different directions and slowly reel it back. Eventually you'll get some hits. There's one. It's a little guy. Little female. Some of these fish might have actually spawned in deeper water. Ooh, her gill plate got a little damage there. See, that's a white belly, that's a female. These are all black crappie. So they're all, they're all gonna have a black tint to them, but those males are gonna be full on tuxedos most mid-May here. And you just cast out along these weed edges. This is like the first growth of weed edges. And basically, they pretty much hit it every time. As big as schools that are in this lake, they're super aggressive when it comes to, to biting plastics. There he is. And they're not tapping it. You just feel the rod tip load up. That's why it's super important to have some sort of ultralight tip. Even though it's an eight foot rod, it's got that super sensitive tip on it. Ch 
choked it too. Another nine inch fish, I bet. Another female. Looks like she spawned out as well. They might have all spawned out. Oh, there's one chasing all the way up. Oh, got him, got him. It's a good one too. Another female. Oh, this female. See that? That's a fat belly. Female has not spawned out yet. That's a spawner fish. She's going right back. The second way to catch these crappie is by bobber and minnow. All right, so this style of bobber that I'm using, it, it is a three in one style. So if you notice, it has a hole through the middle of it so you can use it as a slip bobber, but it also has two little grooves cut. It's got two little grooves cut here. So when I pull the string up, see there's two little grooves there. The top one is for a fixed float, which is what I'm going to be using today since I'm fishing really shallow. But if you're fishing a little bit deeper or you're using a shorter rod, you can use the bottom one here. And the spring slides almost all the way down, leaving enough room for that line to slide through. And you can actually use it as a slip bobber. But today we're using an eight foot rod, uh, casting in some pretty shallow water. So I'm going to use the fixed float method, tip it with a live minnow. All right, for the minnow rig, I'm going with a, a jig head. This is a 1 16th ounce jig head. And then I'm gonna go with a uh, spring bobber setup. These are actually a dual, or a three in one, I guess. You can use them as a slip, put it right through the end of the bobber, or there's two different uh, notches for your line to go into. You could do another loop knot if you want. Actually, let's just do that. Probably the most famous knot for crappie fishermen is a loop knot. You don't have to for a minnow. A lot of guys actually probably tie some sort of uh, Palomar knot, maybe a improved clinch knot. And then this has a spring here, it slides up and you can see those notches. There's two notches. The bottom one is for a slip bobber, that top one is to be fixed. So I'm just going to slide my line into that top notch and then close the spring and it locks us in. All right, there's multiple ways you can hook a minnow. A lot of people like to hook them through the back here. You can hook them through the jaw, through the jaw like this, just like that. Sometimes the crappie have what's called a negative bite and your, your bobber actually won't go down, it'll go sideways. Oh, there's one, there we go. That time it went down. That is awesome to watch that float go down. Oh man, that is so fun. Nice little crappie. You can go back though. We're going for those 10 inch fish for the frying pan. They're right out in front of the boat. As I was saying before it went down, sometimes the bobber will actually come up and go sideways if they They'll hit that minnow or that jig, whatever you're using. Here we go. Oh no, there he was. You'll hit that minnow or that jig and they'll actually run up the water column with it. That's what's called a negative bite and crappie are notorious for that. These seem pretty hungry, so they're, they're probably just gonna take this bobber straight down. Here it goes. Oh, man. There he is, got him. Man, it's a lot of fun. If you got kids or you're brand new to crappie fishing, little jig or even an Aberdeen hook, something like this, you can catch a lot of crappie doing this. Very simple setup. You go through a lot of minnows, but super simple setup. All right, now, number three way to catch them is a little bit different. It's by using these micro crankbaits. This is actually a micro jerk bait a micro jerk bait. It's a two inch little jerk bait. It runs about two to three feet deep, but it's a great way to create a reaction bite. So the third method is just tie one on, tie one of these on, cast into the school, create that reaction bite, and hopefully put some slabs in the boat. There's 
There's one. That's a good one too. That's a good crappie. There he is, got him. Oh no, came off. There he is, got him that time. A little pause. He's on the smaller side. Throw him back. Have to be a little quiet. There's a bunch of boats around me. Last thing you want is them pushing in on your crappie hole. There's one. There we go. That's a better one. That's a better one for the live well. Feels like a better one. Yep. Now, as far as real setup go, I'm using the PC Fun Honor XT 1000 size for my jerk bait setup and 10 pound braid. Yes, 10 pound braid, even though on these clear lakes, when you have some sort of reaction bait, these crappie really don't mind it. Now, when you're using live minnow setups or mo more of a finesse approach, maybe a smaller jig, you probably want to downside to six pound or four pound monofilament. On my, my bobber setup, I usually want a smaller reel, so I went with the 500 size PC Fun Ice X5. I use it mostly for ice fishing, but it's a great setup for pan fishing as well. It keeps the rod really light. You really don't need heavy pound test line when you're fishing small jigs and live bait. And it's a great setup if you're looking for a budget setup to get into crappie fishing or get into pan fishing that ice x5 is a great option as well well thanks for watching i hope you learned something today hope you can put these tactics to use and uh, put some slabs in the boat i didn't really catch slabs today but you might be able to find some on your local lake uh, be sure to click that subscribe button and of course hit the like button I appreciate you watching as always. Check out the PC Fun Ice X5 and the Honor XT if you want to get into pan fishing. We'll see ya.